G'day guys. What you can see on the screen there is the switch mode power supply. Whoops. It doesn't like it when I get near the certain part here. Look at that. Camera's doing that. Getting into the circuit. Anyway, I'll back off. <laughs> That is, the top top trace there is the switch mode supply in this SD2000. This is a very, very old SD2000. It's had a lot of experiments done to it over the years. This is very, very old. And on the bottom there, that's uh, the transmit waveform. So you can see it. I'm not going to get in too close. It'll, oh, I can zoom in, can't I? Of course I can. If I use the right camera, I've got this thing handheld at the moment, so it might be a bit wobbly. I'll just turn that audio down because I've got this thing running on a, uh, a figure eight coil to try and uh, keep the noise down. But uh, yeah, it, it's uh, yeah a little bit, uh, well, I haven't got the thing centered properly, so it's a little bit chirpy. But uh, I'm going to have to swap this to my left hand so I can point point at things and uh, I'm trying to find something good to point with. I just had something in my hand. There's a long plastic thing. Oh, actually, how about this? I'll use a cable tie. Okay, cable tie pointer. Now, the way I've got it set up there, whoops, don't do that too fast. People tell me off. But set up there on a cancel coil sort of that bent looking thing that's where I've got the oscilloscope connected up there just on a piece of wire as a pickup I'll go slow and it depends with where the wire is so you get these uh, transmit pulse flyback that's when the transmitter turns on there 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 and there. And there's another long one in the uh, chain of events, but not going to worry about that. And uh, if I turn the wire around, this would be inverted, so that would be down there. Does Not that it makes much difference. But on these bits here, here, just after, you can see the flyback there from the transmit. This turns off. You get the flyback, flyback's gone. And in this time period here is where you're receiving there there, there, and in here, and then there's more dead time, but uh, the port, port detector's um, picking up just about everything. On the top trace there, that is a switch mode power supply, and if you can see on the switch mode power supply, it's got lots and lots and lots of oscillations. And what these are doing, they're falling in the receive window at the same time so in the receiver the way these are set up all on the one circuit board some of this leaks into here and absolutely uh, trashes the receiver if you uh, have these things uh, made more sensitive and make it go faster and things like that um, the power supply noise gets worse so I had a look at uh, putting some of these little boards in and uh, they they um, are not fast enough on the turn on. They, uh, they're they very laggy. So I've got some sitting down there. I've Down there, there's this thing with the coil on it. And uh, yeah, they, they said they were fairly fast turn on. They're not, they turn, turn on in, um, again, halfway through the event of the uh, receivers it's not a good thing so what I did I went back into my old well that's why I've got this old detector here so we'll go down and have a look at this old detector not that one this one this is the old detector remember I was saying about the front ends that blow up the LM uh, 394s uh, yeah that silver thing there is a replacement now you can get these through it's called, I think it's called R Rapar, and they're in Latvia, of all places. And uh, 
yeah, you can you can buy that. It's got a number on it too somewhere there. Yeah, it's something something else. Um, three nine four or something. I, I can't remember. They they are the the type of device you have to use in these detectors because uh, you need it perfectly thermally balanced. Uh, if as you can see, it's three legs on my side here looking at it, and it's three legs on the other. And each one of those, well, each uh, set of three legs is a NPN transistor. And if there's any um, discrepancy between those two devices, what happens is the detector will scream and moan and be all over the place. Uh, they've got to be thermally bonded. So the two transistors inside that package are on a uh, insulated but a conductive um, pad, um, maybe some sort of um, alumina or ceramic, anyway, however they do it. And uh, yeah, you can replace the, um, the 30, 30 something dollar device if you tried to buy one. They could even be more now because uh, it's no longer made, haven't been made for about, I don't know, 15, 20 years. Uh, you can get these out of Latvia and uh, put them in. They work fine. Um, instead of being like 0.9 uh, dB noise figure, there's something like about a, a 1. It doesn't make any difference uh, on these anyway. So, yeah, as you can see, it's been a bit of work done on this. And remember I was saying about that... Um, capacitor that fails so if we look around here there we are right in the middle of the screen there there's that little capacitor that fails and it's been replaced because it did fail so what we want to do we want to stop all those oscillations occurring through the receive listening window we don't want them on the circuit board whizzing around. They will, they'll just couple and uh, make noise. It's just the layout of this board. It's pretty um, archaic. <laughs> and uh, there's some things you want to do. Now, a few guys have had a go at doing this over the years. I think I did this, oh God, now, 2014, 15, 16, 16. Maybe 16 to 18 years ago. But what, what I've done, and a lot of other people have gone in and uh, done very similar, and uh, I've just made it um, more easier. First of all, if we get down here, the big thing to do is change those, where those blue capacitors are. They're normally 1,000 uh, microfarad. You've got to change them to bigger caps to hold more um, energy because uh, it has to hold the voltage up during the off time which we're going to introduce uh, they're 3300s I think we had them at the time you can get bigger ones now for sure in the same footprint the bigger the better the other thing you want to do too if you probably noticed there's a square thing sitting in there and that's looking down there that is a bigger but shielded inductor they have this little tiny thing in there and uh, I would have thrown it out years ago <coughs> dear me <clears throat> yeah I think it's uh, 150 micro Henry so yeah that's um that sitting there just uh, the little black round thing on two legs just uh, chop it out and uh, I've added legs to that. That's a surface mount device, but I've added legs to it and I've got it in there. <coughs> I'm waiting for coffee to arrive. Because the more I talk, the more dry throat I get and that itchy from that horrible COVID flu, whatever it is, starts attacking. Anyway, what we want to do, main mission was, I was going to rip everything out and Behind there's a diode in there down the bottom there, which you just cut the leg on, not that thing. But it's under the block. It's under the inductor. And, uh, <coughs> yeah, cut a leg on that, and that disables that uh, noisy 5-volt supply. But we'll go back to the old old way we did it, which actually uh, 
I re I re looked at it all, and I actually it's not too bad. Uh, if you want cleaner waveform, there's some information around on the net that uh, says you've got to put uh, um, two diodes um, on that uh, where I've got this uh, capacitor. Well, is that yellow capacitor? Well, I I explain what what it is first before I go on about the changes. On that IC there, it's a 40106, which I'm very, very familiar with. The same when I used to do uh, stud finder designs back in 1980. <coughs> I'm going to cough like crazy soon. And what I've done, I've got a 4.7 nanofarad capacitor sitting there on pin number 9. Now what you've got to do is you've got to lift pin number nine off the board and don't break it off. <coughs> oh, this is getting horrible. I ordered, I ordered a coffee about uh, 15 minutes ago. It takes a long time to boil water in this place for some reason. But uh, yeah, what you got to do is you've got to um, get your soldering iron in there and a very, very fine tool like a little tiny jewel of screwdriver and just bend that leg up in the air off off the solder pad and uh, just isolate it off the board. So it's pin nine. So if you go in the front where I'm looking at the moment, it, it goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, um, basically left to right, and then right to left on the top. So then it goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, then nine. Right, so second one on the top in is nine. That's the way you do the chip numbering. So there is a 4.7 nanofarad capacitor. And I think that might have been two point, oh God, I can't remember what the hell that was. Uh, I don't think it's actually very critical. Uh, yeah, 20, 2200, I think. Or is it, no, no, 22K. Yeah, 22,000 ohm resistor, 22K, it doesn't have to be, it could be up and down, it could be a 10K, it could be, you know, 33K, still works, I think. I've done those experiments ages ago. Now, what you've got to do now, there's a test point down there. Well, actually, it's two sides of the totem pole driver that drives the MOSFETs through a couple of transistors. Can you see that thing with solder on it? I'll try and point it out with a screwdriver. This is dangerous because the detector's on. But uh, that, that there, that point there, these are two transistors that act as a totem pole driver, up and down, fast switching that drives the MOSFETs on and off. And that's the chip there that drives the transistors, which, yeah. So you can see that one there. And what I've done on here, I don't know if you can see very well, but I have actually lifted pin nine off the board. I've actually replaced that IC at one stage. Maybe I slipped and blew it up and replaced it. But anyway, um, yeah, just a, just a HEF 40106. Um, dime a dozen. It should cost you 10 cents if you blow it up. But uh, don't, don't uh, destroy the other pads on the board. As you can see, the other pad, I don't know if I can do this, but I'll try. You see the pad on the board? It is not connected to pin nine. I've lifted the pin up and I've soldered the 4.7 nanofarad. And on this, um, I have seen that uh, there was some designs out there that had two diodes connected to um, somewhere on this line. Uh, you don't need to do it and it's better switching if you don't do it it switches harder and cleaner so what we're going to do here is connect the end of that uh, 22k resistor to where that solder is sitting on that test point and what I'll do you can see here that the switch modes running and it's running straight through the receive windows of the poor old detector so what I'm going to do I'm going to turn this little handheld thing into tripod mode I think I've got to flick this out or something uh, 
yeah, one man comp compromised, as usual. Okay, I'll stick this round here. I'm on the wrong side of it, so I've got no idea where it's pointing at. But I think I push in here and point it down. Or maybe a bit more. Okay, you can see that wire there. What I'm going to do is going to turn this off because I don't want it to blow up. And what I'm going to do, get ye old soldering iron and stick that on there. Oops, I'm too quick. Can someone invent a soldering iron that blasts cold air down on your solder joint so it cools quicker? Oh, dear me. So anyway, that's connected there to that test point, right there. So not really a test point, well, it is. Um, because you've got negative and positive switching on these. If you put an oscilloscope on these, they'll be switching up and down uh, in relation to ground, and this one, we can't remember which ones. I think it's that one there goes negative. This one is uh, ground to positive. So we want to get the right one. Don't get the other side one because the power supply um, won't know what you're doing. Anyway, we've got this uh, hooked up as such. And I wonder if I can get this and just poke it at the screen. Hang on. There we go. Warner Brothers. Movie World. Come on. God, it won't go up any higher than that, bloody thing. I wonder if I can do that. No, I can't do that either. Hang on. I'm going to, to, I'm going to balance it like that. There you go. Cockeyed and all, I don't care. But have a look at the waveform now that I've done that. <coughs> now. You can see that uh, the top waveform is not over the receive windows. If I uh, if I bring up a cursor on here, wrong one, that one, that'll do. If you can see, I'll just use, I'll get rid of one, and just put that one there. But if you have a look at this, okay. I don't think it's a good idea to balance it on a screwdriver. I wonder if I can bend it up anymore. I don't know. Oh yeah, push the button would help. Okay. Don't worry if it's cockeyed. Can't do anything about it. There's just too much stuff on the bench. So what I'll do, I'll get my um, cable tie. And this is all the, this is the power supply there along the top and here. This is the transmitter receive for the, the uh, detector. And if you notice here, these are the transmit parts. These bits here, there, up the top, there, it's transmitting. So we don't care if we're generating noise when it's transmitting because it's not going to do anything. You know, the ground's going to go, oh, you're generating a noisy signal. No, it's not, it's not going to care less, right? So what, what it is though, the critical part is here. Receive, 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 receive. And then a little bit of dead time where nothing happens. A little bit of dead time in here as well, but you know, it's so squashed up. You, you, there's no way of really seeing it unless we go probe actually in the detector, but we don't need to. Now, all we need to know, and I'll just use a cursor to show, I'll move it across. Okay. There's a, bit, there's a little bit of um, kick there, but that's me putting my hand near the cable and it's uh, causing some sort of uh, leakage of uh, some interference getting in. But anyway, wrong one. So we're where it receives a little bit of dead time here where there's nothing really gets happens. Um, I'm not sure how long it is. 
It could be uh, a handful of uh, microseconds. I've never bothered measuring it. And uh, in here it's all clean. There's no power supply running. So I'll get my hand out of there. It's, it's, it's causing some funny looped interference. So if you've noticed, I don't know if you could actually tell, but the detector is a hell of a lot quieter. I'll turn up the volume. It's still noisy because that coil's a bit skew if up there. And the detector will be more sensitive because we've got all that racket um, from appearing in the receive window. There is a little bit of overlap there on the end part, but I think it's in the dead time. I really um, wanted to run a separate supply with a fast um, inhibit uh, on and off. But a lot of people want to put soft start in their power supplies these days. Um, you know, they, they, they think they're going to be um, switching, you know, 100 amp loads or something, you know, and they don't want to do a fast start or, you know, a super hot start on it. And uh, on this, who cares? You know, you're dealing with maybe um, half an amp, or not even that, um, 200 milliamps or something. And... Uh, you, you want to just go smack on, smack off, really hard and fast. And what we're doing now is exactly what they do, or started doing, with the uh, GP uh, and uh, the later detectors. They turn the power supply off during the receive cycle because they have realised that it uh, introduces noise. Why they didn't do that in the 2000, I don't know. And actually, I, it, it's not done in the 2100 and the 2200 as well. Uh, they all have continuous um, switch mode power supply through the receive cycles. So you could do this same modification in the 2000, which this is, the 2100, same power supply, and uh, 2200 is very, very similar. So all you do is find the 40106 near the power supply and uh, tie your um, transmitter in so it allows it to activate whilst it's transmitting when the transmitter turns off um, and goes uh, the other polarity uh, then this um, thing uh, inhibits the um, power supply and so it only operates during the transmit cycle so that is a Quick and easy. I said I was going to do these detectors probably one by one and start off with simple modifications first. This is probably one of the better ones. Get the noise out of it. You know when you're going along with your 2000 or with people who, who've had them, and they remember, you're going along with your 2000 and it's going da 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 da, da. It's, it's just a big chatterbox. And uh, I wonder how many nuggets were lost um, below the noise of uh, the chattery old detector. So that's how you get around it it's very very simple um i think you can just freeze frame this video actually if i get close to the to the uh the camera and uh the detector it starts going crazy listen yeah it's starting to do a beep frequency it's some sort of leakage from the camera and uh yeah, so that's how the power supply runs. Now I'll tell you what I'll do, whilst it's just there, running, like so, you can see on the, uh, and you can hear it as well. Yeah, camera's making a bit of noise now, but what I'll do, I'll just get the snips, and I'm gonna snip where I soldered to that uh, transmit um, totem pole connection, which is, the one on the side of the detector closest to the coil plug, if you really, if you get muddled up, it's the front one. So anyway, I'm gonna cut it and have a look at the waveform. One, two, three. There you go. That, that is the uh, power supply running right through, um, transmitting, receiving, dead time, everything. It's just non-stop. I don't know if you've noticed, the noise has come up. And I'm not near anything, and it's just, um, yeah. And then I'll stick my hand, whoops. I said I was gonna stick my hand in there, but it doesn't like that. Hang on. I'm touching the, uh, I'm gonna touch the case. And I'm just gonna push the wire on. Yeah, 
Yeah, that's me touching it on. Whoops. And that's running flat out. And that's... I'm probably injecting noise in there with my fingers. But anyway, I can't help that. But yeah, that's how this works. So if you want to clean it up. And uh, yeah, it's, it's um, a little bit of... You notice that um, on the power supply, we had that big uh, one sticking up. Um, the last one of the four... Um, power supply pulses during the receive window. Notice that the big one's gone, and the reason that's gone is because I have my thumb stuck on that totem pole output. So obviously, um, by looking at it, it could be, I might be killing off a little bit of leakage. But the other thing you could do is put a very, very small capacitor, uh, I'm talking small, maybe 100 picofarads or so, from that test well, it's not a test point. People call it a test point. It's an in, it, Well, it sort of is, I suppose. It tells you that transistor's working. Um, but what you could do is, from that point there, or from the transistor, or one of the uh, resistors or capacitors that connect to that point, you can find it out, beep it out for multimeter, uh, connect a small capacitor to ground. It might clean up the supply a bit more. But, yeah, that's me with my uh, thumb on it, because I'll just... I'll take my thumb off and it's just jumped straight off. Hang on. It actually uh, took a while to st stabilise then. Hang on. I'm soldering it on now so I don't have to hold it. Get my fingers out of there. Okay, we'll go back on. Okay, that, that um, larger one on the end has gone. I don't know what or why it was there. That's interesting. No, 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 no. No, no, I, I wasn't. I was watching the screen when I was putting that on. I put on the wrong point. I stuck it on the uh, another reference point. It's actually turning it on the complete opposite way. Get on there. It's a trouble if, when you um, got a camera and trying to explain things. You're not watching what you do sometimes. And uh, that there is pushing on the circuit board. So I'll lift that up. Let's try again. Yeah, and this time, if you notice, we've got that big kicker there at the end, which actually, uh, because it's leaning over, to well, that's in increasing its uh, on time into the window here. We don't want that, that thing there. There, there, and there. And when I put my finger on this, let's see if it goes away. No. I wonder if I actually um, had that on the other point before and I was uh, going straight on the receive window because it because it's an inverse of the transmit. Silly me. But, uh, yeah, may maybe there is a way you can um, snubber that down a little bit. It's uh, it's just as it uh, turns off, the uh, inductor's going, like, giving a bit more of a wee-oo, you know, dumping the energy. Um, without getting hit with another cycle. So that's what's happening there. It's actually an inductive spike. That could be taken care of with a RC um, network, which is just a resistor and a capacitor in series and put it across the inductor. Um, and you may have to experiment to get that level down. So anyway, that's how you make a synchronous power supply for this. Don't need to go and put a power supply and just do it. Like, well, just, just do that. It's uh, very, very simple. But uh, yeah, it does need a, um, it would help if I put a snubber across it and uh, take that spike down to um, a lot less than what it's doing. So you can't put too um, small a resistor in there. You can't put something like 10 ohms in there or something and you can't go put a microfarad capacitor in there. And it's gonna be maybe um, at this, what frequencies this thing run at? Uh, um, 
I should be able, e easy be able to work that out. It's a lot faster than what it's transmitting at anyway. So it's definitely uh, might be running at about 60 or 70 kilohertz, isn't it? I, I don't know. Um, I'll have to go and measure that. I'll, I'll get a free free running uh, waveform so I can actually measure the uh, free running frequency, and then I could uh, work out how to make a snubber. Um, just uh, very very simple. Um, bit of mathematics uh, on the inductor the frequency and uh, should be able to tell me um, how much I should uh, my resistor value and my capacitor value just just to take off the edge on that um, yeah but yeah I can see it's got it's got uh, some spikes coming down from the top to um, just up the top here so we have a little bit of uh, uh, inductor leakage or something something going on something's not exactly matched maybe um well 150 micro henry's might be a little too much maybe we can get it down to 100 or 120 and clean it up but the thing is you've got to be careful because we're relying <clears throat> on the amount of uh charge going into the capacitors so if you slow things down too much, you might not um, get enough uh, enough hits into the capacitors to hold them up properly. And if you do it too fast, um, then the, the uh, capacitors might be seen as a high impedance. It won't want to. Um, it well, the capacitors just basically don't look like they're there if you go too fast, and uh, you won't get any charge storage again. So you've got to match everything a little bit, but. Uh, yeah, I think um, in the, where the, there's a couple of uh, 3300 caps in this one, you could change them. You could probably squeeze them in, uh, put in a couple of uh, 6800s or even 10,000 micro Henry. Uh, sorry, micro Henry, micro Farad uh, capacitors, and uh, possibly with this too, you can change the clock rate of the power supply. I should mention this as well. And I'll tell you where you do that. I'll tell you you do that. Uh, I'll have to hold this to do this. Okay, helps if I look at what I'm doing. This chip here, that's the big fat finger. It's not going to show you anything. I like the way metal sticks to it. it wants to blow everything up. But anyway, that chip there that uh, has a lot of divided outputs coming on you can probably see where i've been on there before where the pins are a bit uh, or had solder on them and what i actually did um you can remove this capacitor here take it off this end and you can actually put it on that 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 or that and you can change the clocking rate of the power supply faster or slower um, I think it might be running at six, 62 kilohertz for memory. That rings a bell. Um, but you can lift that capacitor and uh, take off that the far, far leg and then just jump a wire onto the capacitor to any of those takeoff points there and inspect the power supply. And have a look at the ripple on the uh, 5 volt power supply too. And you'd be able to say if it's uh, working properly. The five volt output, by the way, is on the other side of that, um, where I've got the crow probes on one side of the inductor, the other side of the inductor, this end, is your output, which is going from that inductor into those capacitors. I forgot there's a diode under there too. I've got, to, I've got to remember there's a diode there. I just can't see it because it's underneath the inductor I put in there. So beefing up the inductor um, current-wise because it does have to do a little bit more work when you're charging up these capacitors like the inrush current to those caps would be significant. So beef up the inductor. It, um, it might be a good idea if you actually beefed up the uh, um, 2N7002 device or um, the e-line in this case whatever it is uh, a lot of the later ones have seven uh, yeah 
2N7002, little uh, MOSFETs there. They are only good for 60 milliamps. I don't think 60 milliamps will cut the mustard charging those capacitors from cold start. So uh, the poor MOSFET might go to God. But put in something bigger. Uh, put in a, a one, amp, one amp FET or something like that, or even put a three amp one in there. You can get small ones. Um, or I can go and hunt it all up and make a, a list of it all. But yeah, that's how you do it anyway. That's how you get your power supply out of your receive and uh, everything else. You know, because, you know, there's your front end right there. There's all your noisy power supply and it just basically goes on the circuit tracks and it just gets in, Mrs. Marsh. It does. So you could put a, um, um, a crow probe uh, on the um, uh, collectors of these two transistors sitting here and just put an AC couple and just uh, go down and have a look at in the millivolt range and you will see power supply ripple all over them. So doing this, it gets rid of it in the receive window. So it's a bonus, guys. It is a bonus. There you go. You can, you can half modify these old detectors to something like a GP or a GPX in the power supply area uh, just by utilising what's already on the board. But yeah, like I say, this was done, oh, that switch there, uh, two crystals, one is 1.8 megahertz, and one is 3.279, uh, color TV, color burst crystal, dime a dozen. Don't know if they still, well, you know, crystals are hard to get now, but they were, they were easy to get at one stage. So that's how we clock these things higher, because uh, they run on a crystal oscillator. So... Yeah, the whole thing's governed by those two crystals. And uh, I flick the switch. It's in the, uh, the 3 megahertz range at the moment. Like, if I go here, have a look at the screen, everything will stretch out. So we're only showing a couple of uh, transmit pulses there. So it's a lot slower. The uh, receive windows are wider. Everything's wider. Transmit pulses are longer. And uh, it's basically so close to being right on 50 hertz, it sits there going whoop, 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 whoop. So that's why uh, we always move it away from those even number crystal frequencies. Because they will be somehow, if it's an even number, it's going to be a derivative of 50 hertz somewhere. You know, if you, you multiply 50 by no matter how many times, it'll come up as an even number. So the, uh, the other one is a, a really strange number. So... It uh, doesn't land on a, um, a harmonic or an integer of um, 50 hertz. And uh, in the US, you probably don't have to worry because it's 60 hertz, but anyway. So, that's that. Um, yeah, I put a 3 amp high speed diode in the front of this as well, rather than those little um, 1 amps. As you can see, I've replaced resistors and things behind there at some stage. It's probably burnt out. Uh, yeah, it's had a few things done to it over over the time, but it works beautifully. Ground balances beautifully. Um, yeah, it's had, had some work done in there. I think something fell off. The capacitors that are there are actually under the board. I put them under the board because uh, something chewed out in there and uh, it had to be replaced. I had to get under the capacitor, like on that twenty one hundred. By the way, the 2100 I did last night, uh, yeah, it came up perfect. I had to remove the pots, had to remove the caps, had to remove all the glue. And uh, it was, would you believe, it was a damn dry joint. <laughs> and uh, when, I was, when I put it all back together, it was working properly. Uh, then I was, uh, had, it, had the, um, the um, uh, trim pot tacked on like these ones here, but the other ones on the 2100 are up in the air. <coughs> and what happened is that somehow I must have mistakenly had it on. And I think I um, shorted something. So when I turned it back on, channel two was dead. And I'm going, what's going on here? So I had to pull the damn thing off again. And uh, I couldn't see what was going on. It was just um, all the switching output was gone. So I had to replace the uh, 4066 and uh, I replaced that, put it back together, turned it on and bloody worked, thank God. Uh, so, yeah, that was my drama.
big big time consuming effort so anyway guys it, the first thing about doing your 2000 fix the power supply up <coughs> yeah anyway i've got a coffee over there now waiting for me probably cold uh, because it has been delivered and uh, yeah i'm fix this throat up damn it's getting better it's you know it's still yeah croaky and uh start itch itching if i speak too much anyway that's uh that catches